the ship was bearing down on them. Commander Ramich knew that if he didn't act, he and every man aboard his vessel would die in a watery grave, so he gave the command. Fire. Born January 19, 1909 in Monroe, Massachusetts, Lawson P. Ramage, or Red as some colleagues would come to know him due to his distinctive red hair, was a large man who took to Navy life from an early age. Entering the Naval Academy in 1927, he was seen as a bright recruit. The young Ramage graduated in 1931 and was soon sent to serve as the navigator for the destroyer USS Dickerson. Later assignments included an engine officer aboard the destroyer USS Lawrence and a radio officer aboard the USS Louisville. However, despite being successful in these roles, Ramage had always wanted to serve aboard a submarine. As a young man, Ramage had injured his eye in a wrestling accident which caused him to be considered unfit for service aboard a submarine because of partial blindness. After failing his first attempt, Ramage used the opportunity to study the eye chart so that he could memorize it for his next attempt. Ramage passed the subsequent eye exam and was soon sent to serve aboard the submarine S-29, an ancient relic that had been laid down in 1919. After a stint at school for his postgraduate degree, Ramage served as a sound officer at Pearl Harbor where he witnessed the massive destruction firsthand. Ramage served as navigator for the USS Grenadier where he was awarded a silver star as part of the Grenadier's crew. Following this voyage, Ramage was finally able to take over command of his first submarine, the USS Trout. Ramage commanded the Trout through four war patrols, sinking an estimated three ships and damaging several others. In August 1942, the Trout was able to score the first successful hit against a Japanese aircraft carrier as the Trout was able to hit the IJN Taiyo, damaging but not sinking her. Despite her earlier successes, however, Ramage's fourth and final voyage in the Trout was his least successful of the war. On this patrol, the Trout fired 15 torpedoes, but only one hit its target, resulting in only moderate damage to the ship. Following his fourth patrol with the Trout, Ramage was relieved of command and sent to the Navy Yard at Portsmouth, New Hampshire for rest and to oversee the completion of the Navy's newest Palau-class submarine, USS Parch. After the ship's completion, she sailed around the United States to Hawaii and set out for her first patrol in March 1944 as part of a three-ship wolf pack alongside her sister ships, Bang and Tonosa. Combined, the three ships were believed to have sunk seven Japanese vessels worth over 35,000 tons in shipping. Parch accounted for two ships and 11,700 tons of cargo. Parch's second patrol, and the one that would set both her and her commander's reputation, began in June of 1944. She was once again in a wolf pack, this time with USS Steelhead and Hammerhead on July 31st, when the three submarines engaged a convoy including as many as 25 Japanese ships and multiple anti-submarine escorts. After a successful attack by the Steelhead, Parch was positioned for her own attack when the Japanese started launching flares to eliminate the water and scare off any attacking submarines. Undaunted by the fact that his ship was now illuminated for the guns of the armed enemy ships, Commander Ramage ordered everyone off the bridge, save for his quartermaster, so they would be safe from enemy small arms fire. Commander Ramage steered his ship directly into the heart of the enemy convoy, avoiding the escorts and positioning her for a torpedo shot on an armed transport that was nearby. Both torpedoes missed the ship, but in the process, the transport was forced to steer into the path of one of the escorts, blocking the parchy from the escort's view and opening up a lane for the ship to fire at two tankers nearby. Commander Ramage again fired one of his ship's torpedoes at the armed transport, scoring a direct hit and putting the transport out of service. Ramage then turned his attention to one of the nearby tankers, the Koei Maru. He ordered the crew to fire torpedoes at the tanker, and all four registered hits, destroying the tanker. Commander Ramage then ordered the Parshi to turn around and unleash torpedoes from the rear tubes at the other nearby Japanese tanker, the Ogura Maru. The first torpedo narrowly skirted the front of the ship, but the second two found their mark, hitting the bow of the tanker and causing her to slow due to heavy damage. Now, one might have expected that having had his fun and with the ship's torpedo tubes being empty, any sane commander would order his ship to dive and escape to safer waters to reload their torpedo tubes, and perhaps even return to harbor elated by their success. Not loss and ramage. Amid withering gunfire from surrounding ships and whilst being constantly tossed about by their own vessel's erratic movements, Ramage ordered his crew to reload the Parchi's torpedo tubes while on the surface and under fire. This had never been done before in naval combat. After several stressful minutes and many hair-raising encounters with nearby ships, the Parchi's torpedo tubes were reloaded and she was able to resume the fight. While Parchi had been reloading, a Japanese freighter, the Dakar Maru, was bearing down on her, intent on ramming and sinking the defenseless submarine. Commander Ramage fired torpedoes at the ship, stopping it dead in its tracks. 
Not content with having merely caused severe damage to the Ogura Maru, Commander Ramage ordered the party about and launched three more torpedoes at the tanker, all of which scored direct hits. However, while Commander Ramage had been fixated on targeting the tanker, one of the convoy's escorts, the Kazan Maru, was bearing down on the sub, once again intent on ramming her. Ramage ordered full power and starboard full rudder and turned the ship out of the way of the oncoming escort with only seconds to spare. By some accounts, the ships were within 50 yards of each other and Commander Ramage is said to have tipped his cap at the enraged Japanese sailors as the two ships passed by. After executing this evasive maneuver, Commander Ramage found that the Parchi was in a dangerous predicament as she was blocked in on two sides by escorts and a large transport the Yoshina Maru was steaming directly at her head on. Ramage ordered his crew to fire one torpedo, which narrowly missed the charging transport. He then ordered his crew to fire more torpedoes. This time, the torpedoes went straight down the huge ship's throat, stopping her dead in the water. As a parting measure, Lawson ordered to fire one last torpedo from her rear tube, sinking the wounded transport ship. What Ramage would not know until much later is that Yoshino Maro had been transporting 5,000 Japanese troops, 2,442 of which died when the ship sank. By the time that the Parchi finally submerged and headed for home, a boat and her incredible captain had been engaged with vessels from the Japanese convoy for an amazing 46 minutes. Despite intense fire from many surrounding vessels in the proximity of the battle, the Parchi escaped the engagement almost completely unscathed. As a result of his brave actions during the July 31st battle, Commander Lawson Ramage was awarded the Medal of Honor for his valor in combat. The crew also received a presidential unit citation because of their valiant actions, and the captain gave everyone a certificate stating, The captain wishes to emphasize the fact that the Medal of Honor was accepted from the President of the United States as the nation's tribute to a fighting ship and her courageous crew. He feels that every officer and man whose loyal cooperation and able assistance contributed to the success of the USS Parchi has an equal share in the award which he holds in trust for you. With great pride and respect, sincerely, Lawson P. Ramage. Ramage only went on to serve in one additional war patrol aboard the USS Parchi, which was generally uneventful, resulting in no ships being sunk. After the war, Ramage would go on to become an admiral, captain several ships, and command several fleets. He also led the search for the submarine USS Thresher, which is lost off the coast of Massachusetts. Ramage retired in 1970, eventually passing away from cancer in 1990. The United States Navy commissioned the USS Ramage, an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer, in his honor.